Once freelancers understand the importance of cold pitching to land higher paying freelance clients, the next question is always, okay, but who do I pitch? Who are these people that I send the message to? I'm super excited to be explaining that in this video because it's a question that I get asked a lot in the comments and the DMs. The best places to be pitching, meaning what platforms, email, social media, and then I'm going to explain the titles within those companies that you're reaching out to, the titles to look for so that you can spot them and actually send messages to those people and know that they're the ones that hire freelance writers. By the end of this video, you're gonna know exactly who to pitch so you can land higher paying freelance writing clients, remain self-employed, work from home, or maybe you're looking to transition completely from a nine to five job to freelance writing and you have no experience doing this, this video is for you too. Make sure you stay till the end because I'm dropping a tip about how to find clients that I notice nobody is talking about online and I'm excited to share that with you. I'm Christine from Paid copywriter.com. I mentor freelance writers about how to manage their freelance writing business, how to get higher paying clients, how to get repeat business. And I post free tips here every week on freelance business management. So make sure you're subscribed and you're definitely going to want to download my free guide to getting on LinkedIn. It tells you a little bit about my story, about how I became a full-time freelancer, but then breaks down the nitty gritty of how you can get on LinkedIn today. You're going to want to download that free guide. It is linked below. Do not miss that free resource. Now, if you are looking for how to find out who within those companies or media publications or associations to reach out to, I would say LinkedIn is your best bet. I have tons of videos on this channel regarding LinkedIn because I believe it is one of the most underrated and best sources for freelancers to land their writing clients. And the reason being is that LinkedIn basically acts as a Rolodex. It gives you a transparent org chart of a company, which is really key now because gone are the days where you can really go on a company's website and see their entire staff. I mean, people don't really stay at companies the way they once did. People are constantly hopping around. And if you're following them on LinkedIn, you get to see in real time as they make those switches in order to see what somebody title is, what they do, what they care about. You can gather so much information using LinkedIn, especially if they're active on LinkedIn. Now I'm going to give you six of the most common titles to use when you are doing searches on LinkedIn. When you see these titles, you're going to say to yourself, well, this person could be in need of a writer and I'm going to pitch them. The first one is a CEO, a founder, or a creator of a company. Depending on how big the company is, you might be pitching the founder or the creator themselves. This is typically with smaller companies. If you reach out to an enterprise company or a Fortune 500, they have a structured marketing department, most likely, where you would be reaching out to somebody within the marketing department. But if it's a smaller company and if this is all based on your niche, you could be reaching out to the CEO themselves. You would typically just search CEO or founder. The second, and I would say this is the most common title you're going to want to reach out to is marketing titles. Examples of marketing titles are CMO, which stands for chief marketing officer. It could be director of marketing, director of content marketing. It could also be the creative director. Anyone with communication communications in their title could be good. Director of communications. Sometimes they call it comms, C-O-M-M-S. And finally, content lead and content strategist. So if a company has an actual content department, it's pretty safe to say that they're prioritizing content and that person is responsible for hiring writers or freelancers. As a first step, you're going to want to get clear on the type of companies and brands that you want to work for. Google these companies and start making a running list of them. You will be shocked at how clear things become when you compile a list of companies and understand a little bit more about who you're reaching out to and can see them in list form. I'm going to give you the four types of organizations and companies that hire freelance writers so you understand what you're going to be putting on that list. Number one is the most obvious, companies and corporations. Obviously, we are freelance content and copywriters. We are writing with the end goal of persuading and selling. That is who personally I work for as a freelance copywriter. Number two is is advertising and marketing agencies. Agencies are constantly looking for writers. It can be really great for you to get involved with an agency because they will handle basically the entire client acquisition part of your freelance business. I go into this in detail in another video that I'll link to below about the pros and cons of working with agencies. You most likely will get paid a little bit less than if you were working directly for the client. It's easier to get those opportunities. You can get your foot in the door with big name clients that you would never have access.
access to. There are benefits to working with an advertising agency and they are always looking for writers to add to their staff. The third place that hires writers are magazines, blogs, and media publications. I used to write for a small business publication called Fit Small Business. Their entire business model was like affiliate marketing. It was basically a bunch of articles on a website. Think of your favorite blogs and try to understand how they're making money. They're making money through your content and linking out to paid products, most likely. There's a little bit of a difference working for a company and working for a media publication. Media publications like Forbes, for instance, are publishing several articles per day. They're really pumping out timely, relevant content, whereas a company might just be focused on, hey, let's create educational content about our product and promoting our product. A media company is more story related. I also think the pitching process is a little bit different because as somebody who is a freelance writer for companies, I don't typically pitch stories and angles unless they ask for it. I find that the companies I work for already have a marketing strategy. They already know the topics they want written about and they just have to assign it to somebody. But if you're writing for a publication, they're going to want to see that you're able to pitch angles and story ideas. If you have more of an interest in journalistic writing, I would say that's a good option for you. The fourth is associations and groups. Every city, town, state has their own association. This could be nonprofits, but for example, it could also be a networking group. I know where I live, they have a local business networking group. And I just remember that I got on their email list and their email was terrible. I remember wanting to pitch them be like, hey, do you need a writer that's going to help you actually keep your members up to date and not have spelling errors and stuff like that? I didn't wind up doing it. But my point is there are so many associations and nonprofits out there that you can pitch. They're not the exact same as a company. They're not structured the exact same way, but they're pretty similar in the sense that they have a message and they want to recruit members and they'll use your writing for those purposes. If you're pitching an agency or maybe even a media publication, the titles might be a little bit different because you'll see the word editorial. The most common person to pitch at a publication is going to be the editor. There could be several variations of that title, editor in chief, editor of blah, 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 senior editor, managing editor. When stories are involved, and I notice when you're working for an agency too, there's a lot of creative directors or editorials versus marketing titles. Now, these last two tips are tips you're not going to find anywhere else. I don't see other writers talking about this. Something you really want to do is network with graphic designers. Graphic designers like you are freelancers who are brought in on projects in a very similar fashion, and they're working on the same projects that you would be working on as a writer. They're just working on the visual side. So for example, if I'm writing a website, I'm usually working hand in hand with a graphic designer to add the visuals to the website and structure it visually. If I'm writing an ebook, it always goes to a graphic designer after. If you can network and form relationships with graphic designers in your niche, they could be the ones actually giving you referrals and leads. Don't underestimate the power of networking with graphic designers. We are butt buddies in this world of freelancing. And the final tip, something no one talks about, is just straight up asking for an introduction to the right person. I was a former salesperson before I transitioned into copywriting, and something we were trained to do as salespeople was to reach out to who we had access to, fully acknowledging that they're probably not the right person, but that they would know who within the company is the right person. If you absolutely can't figure it out, especially in the beginning, it's really hard to understand where your sweet spot is and who you will get a response from, right? Like knowing which titles give you the most success and get the most responses, that's something you're gonna figure out as you cold pitch. You're gonna find out, oh, people with that title tend to answer me, and then you're gonna double down on that. But in the beginning, it's a little bit difficult to determine who actually is that person. Don't be afraid to ask reach out to the CEO and say, hey, I see you're doing this, this, and this. I would love to write for you. Is there somebody in the marketing or editorial department that I can send my portfolio to? Uh, I know you're probably not the person to reach out to for this, but would you mind recommending me someone who is? It's a very underrated, overlooked way to find the right person to reach out to. And just from experience, a lot of the pitches I have sent have literally gotten the response back. Hey, yeah, I think we are looking for writers, but this is the person you're gonna reach out to. And they send me their email address or their LinkedIn profile, and then I reach out to them. So don't worry if you don't know exactly who to reach out to and don't be afraid to find out who to reach out to. Now, this channel is all about finding higher paying freelance writing clients. There's a lot of ways to go about building a freelance business, breaking into copywriting and finding clients. But my main thing is 
How do we get the most bang for our buck? How do we make a full-time living working for as few clients as possible in one specific niche? It's all about working smarter and not harder. And that's why I put together an entire free workshop about how to find higher paying clients, how to find and pitch the high quality clients. So here's what I'm gonna cover in this workshop. Number one, how to spot the telltale signs of higher paying clients. How do you know when you're looking at their website or when you're interacting with them that they actually have the budget to work with a copywriter and they're ready to invest? Now, I mentioned this a little bit before, but I'm gonna teach you how to optimize your profile. The top three most important sections of your profile to optimize so that you're showing up in results for these high paying clients because you don't wanna spend your whole life just doing outreach and cold pitching even though it's such an amazing skill. We wanna also be optimized so that while we're working in our business, we also have clients proactively inquiring about our services and coming in as inbound leads. So I'm gonna teach you how to position yourself correctly to appeal to those clients with the budgets. And then of course, I'm gonna teach you once you have those two things in place, how to craft a cold pitch that specifically cuts the noise and gets in front of those high paying, high quality freelance writing clients. So if you see other freelance writers absolutely killing it and you're like, what am I doing wrong? this workshop is for you. I am going to share what we do differently. This workshop is going to help you if you've been trying this for a while and every time you go to take that next step, the imposter syndrome kicks in. And you're like, I'm not ready for this. I don't know what I'm doing. And you just never wind up making progress. This will push you over the edge. And what I really made sure to do in this workshop is to stop the analysis paralysis. There's a lot of mental chatter, a lot of procrastination that happens when building a freelance business because we tend to get in our own heads and really buy into the excuses of why we can't do something. I'm going to really push you to get over that. Check out the link to this free workshop. Do yourself a favor. Invest that hour. Put your cell phone away. Put the distractions away and create space in your day to learn a really important skill that's going to serve you throughout your self-employment journey. It's so, so important and it's my gift to you. Enjoy.